Echo's third episode begins with another Choctaw flashback, but this one is done in the vein of a silent western from the 1800s, with all of the conversation being displayed as text on screen. The Light Horsemen, a group of native police officers, are introduced to us. We meet Tuklo, another of Maya's ancestors, who aspires to fight for her people's peace rather than conform to stereotypical roles for women. She demonstrates her worth by saving the Light Horsemen and paving her own route, even though at the time women were expected to give rather than take lives. Just like we've Maya taking steps to do in the present day. A montage of black and white scenes with further Native American antics may be seen in Echo Episode 3. Yeah. This time, like in Episode 2 with the games, we witness the oppression of women in this culture in comparison to men. After being rejected, our main character rides off. She chooses to ride with the light horsemen and braids her hair in the same manner as the warriors. In the end, our young shooter proves everyone wrong by doing the right thing by her father. Maya sees her ancestors in yet another vision. Maya's mother from the crash, Chaffa, Tuklo, and the pregnant lady. After that, she is apprehended and returned to the roller skate rink, where she is being detained in order for Vicky, Thomas E. Sullivan to profit from the bounty that has been set on Maya's head following the apparent murder of Wilson Fisk. Not the smartest people in the group, Vicky and his team believe this will be an easy score. For the first time in decades, her cousin Bonnie, Devery Jacobs and Maya are reunited when Bonnie is forced into this hostage situation. Given that she has been totally gone from Bonnie's life and the location she formerly called home, she has every right to be unhappy with her. When Tula returns to the present, she meets Scully and they talk about Maya's comeback. Given that Biscuit's automobile has now been totaled, she is upset that he is involved in this. Given that Tula is unaware that Scully healed Maya's leg, he maintains his poker look. Scully laments Tula's stubbornness and advises her to give her grandchild some space. Kingpin's soldiers show there to get revenge on the fallen commander and exact retribution for Maya blowing up their facility. They show off the TV Ma rating this serial has by shooting Vicky in a full mob-like motion. In order to support her full-scale attack on the villains, Maya follows in MacGyver's footsteps and crafts a weapon out of skate components. In one of the most amazing action sequences the MCU has ever seen, she kicks some serious ass in order to weaken her adversaries. I don't like being played with. No. We you don't have that. Yeah. Well, boys. Any boys? He's here somewhere. No. She also blasts some Rob Zombie really loud. Bonnie is holding Maya at gunpoint, and that stops her. Just when it appears that Maya's time is over. Then they receive an enigmatic phone call and have to cancel. Maya is still having flashbacks to her Native American relatives in the interim. But sadly her visions come back to bite her when she's abducted and tied up at the skating rink. She escapes and watches from a distance as Henry is restrained and choked. Here, Vicky is the boss, and he has his associate, a middle-aged lady, on security duty. Though they hadn't planned on Bonnie turning up outside, she enters through the unlocked rear door and meanders around the corridors. While he is present, Henry signals to her about the covert activities. Bonnie radios through to dispatch after she departs, but before she can finish the call, she is carried out. 
these guys aren't stupid, and Bonnie ends up tied up in the same room as Maya. A concealed dagger in Maya's shoe allows her to escape her shackles, and it also frees Bonnie. Maya maintains her poker face, but Henry finds out that Vicky has made a backup call. As they arrive at the skating rink, Maya is ready to cry. She swiftly rustles together a homemade rifle and blows out the lights with a plethora of gadgets. Acting as an intermediary, Vicky demands his money from the guys loyal to the kingpin. But when he doesn't cooperate and demands his money up front, their commander Zane shoots him to death. Maya Lopez chooses to stalk the troops on her own, and Zane is after her. A combat scene unfolds with several cooperative stunt performers, one of whom only stays motionless in anticipation of Maya's German suplex into a pinball machine. Everything is going well until Bonnie finds herself at gunpoint in Zane's possession. Maya feels compelled to give in, but then Zane's phone rings. He makes the decision to abandon with all of his soldiers, saving Maya, Henry, and Bonnie in the process, regardless of who is on the other line. Henry informs Maya that evening that Kingpin has returned since he is aware of who this is. Henry makes the decision to support her going forward. That afternoon, Scully gives her a brand new prosthetic limb and urges her to visit Tula. He makes the argument that Tula should probably go make up with Maya because she departed with a shattered heart. However, there is still the unsolved drama with Bonnie. What then does Maya choose to do? She then gathers her belongings and leaves for home. Maya's uncle Henry, Chask Spencer believes that Kingpin is the only person who could have placed the call. Since she shot him in the face the last time she saw him, Maya is in shock. Graham Greene's character Scully gives Maya her brand new prosthesis, which is adorned with exquisite Choctaw artwork. Upon her return home, she encounters Kingpin, who has traveled all the way to Oklahoma with a proposal. One of the greatest villains in the Marvel Cinematic Universe makes a triumphant comeback in Episode 3, which amps up the action and bloodshed.